What a season we have had. And now it's time to take this form onto the world stage. It's the World Cup of 2026. It's our last as a player and we need to try and help England win the trophy. Can we do it? Let's find out. So then, welcome back everyone. What's going on? I hope you're all doing fantastic. And yeah, the World Cup, as you see, this is our group. Bulgaria, the United States and Egypt are the three sides we will face in a group that we should get through without too many problems. I don't want to jinx it though. Um, some of the other groups, in case you've yet to see them, I did show you them, I think, briefly in the last episode. If you've not seen that, go and check it out. 40 minutes of uh, the episode in which we wrapped up the Premier League title. I won't spoil which way it went, but... Yeah, 40 minutes of that episode to decide the title between us and Liverpool. Um, so Group A, Belgium and Spain, Russia and Ecuador. Um, a few of the games have already been played as well because I've simmed right to the start of the tournament to make sure that we're ready to get into the action today. So I uh, went very quickly through there, but hopefully you saw the teams involved. For us, it's the United States first. And let's get ourselves into our first game of the World Cup 2026. Kicking things off with the England starting 11 then. It's a strong substitute bench as well. And in terms of the side, there's a lot of quality out there. And as for our opponents then, Zach Steffen starts in goal. There's a few familiar faces as well in the starting 11. You might remember Weston McKenney, once a teammate of ours over with Borussia Dortmund. Not only him as well, Christian Pulisic, who of course is a teammate of ours currently with Chelsea. Giovanni Reyna only good enough to get a place on the bench for the United States today. It's our first of hopefully many games to come in the World Cup. It's a big tournament. And uh, as much as there is a lot of pressure on me, you know, with it being the last one, I don't want to jinx anything. I don't want to focus too much on the fact that it is my last tournament. I just want to play the normal way we would normally. And then hopefully the results will come. Ben Chilwell with a good overlap here on the left-hand side. And now he can find the feet of Sancho. Sancho to Deli Alley, And England strike after nine minutes. And it's a thunderous finish from Deli, And it was nicely worked as well. It's going to be so good to get to link up with Jaden Sancho again following our Dortmund days. And uh, as you see, Chilwell into Sancho. Lays it on a plate to the on-running Deli. There's a few options actually that Sancho could have picked out. Any one of them in a great position. The US just not picking up the runners. And that's a great finish. 1-0 England. Half an hour gone here. Still England in front by a goal to nil. And the US yet to really get Christian Pulisic on the ball. Their danger man. And this has fallen kindly for us. If we can look to place it, we tried. And Zach Steffen provides the save. But it's England who are looking the more likely to find the next goal in the match here. And like I say, they need to try and get Pulisic on the ball a bit more and really let him try and drive them forward. That's a good save, though, from Stefan. And uh, it will be a corner. Can we get our second from this? Looking towards the penalty spot area. There's the delivery right on the money. But unfortunately, we aren't able to win the header. It's still here for Foden, though. England looking to keep the pressure on with Kane now. And now Gomez up from centre-back, still from the corner. Alexander-Arnold, lovely ball into the box. And I can't get the touch past Robinson. You read what I was trying to do. First change of the game for us as Marcus Rashford is on. Phil Foden makes way. Harry Kane goes for the shot from the free kick. It was quite some way out, which I wasn't expecting Kane to actually take on. And to be fair to him, he's not far away. I think Stefan, though, pretty much has that covered. Sancho, lovely ball forward. And now with 25 to play, England still... Putting the pressure on, trying to find the second. Here's Rashford straight at Stefan. What a glorious chance to give England surely the win here in the opening fixture of the World Cup. We'll still look to create with Chilwell over on the left. Can Ben Chilwell provide the assist? Now Sancho back towards Kane. Harry Kane's back heel is not going to work out and Brooks can cut it out. And you know what? I said we've controlled it, but... All it does take is that one, one chance. I know I've said that numerous times before. Don't lose it now, England. Timothy Weyer through towards Pulisic. England won. USA won. And right at the time I said, all it takes is one chance. I might have left that in the video. They've done it. They've created the one chance. And Christian Pulisic has drawn them level. The substitute, Timothy Weyer 
on with literally his first touch, lays it on a plate to Pulisic. And the Chelsea man fires home past Henderson. And you just knew, didn't you, that when you saw Pulisic, hang on a second because Robinson's completely through. Robinson, side netting. I thought we'd see the offside flag, but we didn't. And Robinson with, well, I don't know how that worked, but that could have so easily been 2-1. Pulisic corner into the last few minutes of the match now. If there's to be a winner, it has to be now or never. Rice's ball forward, I'll chase it. Are we able to keep it in play? We've got the pace, but it looks like it's come off me there for a throw-in to the US, which they'll happily take. And my friends, hang on. How has that touch gone so bad? Don't blow the whistle yet, ref. Don't blow the whistle yet. One last chance. Rice, that's poor. England are held to a point here against the USA in a game that for 70 minutes we were so comfortable in. All right, this is a big game here. Egypt, who won their opening fixture and were not even actually selected for it, which is something that happens during the World Cup. You always play a game, miss a game usually, but forced to sim it and please, can we get the result? Has to be an England win here. Anything less and I'm worried about our qualification. Right then, quick sim, and we did comfortably win. 3-0, Foden, Mount and Delhi all on the score sheet. Egypt without a single shot on goal. Very, very good performance there. And it means that we move on to four points for the group then. And we'll take a look and see just how, yeah, well, the USA beat Bulgaria. So, as long as we win against Bulgaria, we're in. We're into the knockout rounds. Um... It was obviously disappointing to have dropped points in our first match, but it's the way football is at times. And we'll see, are we back in the lineup here? Yes, we are for this Bulgaria fixture. So I'll see you in the match. So here we go for our final group stage match then. As we go through the England 11, Ben White starting in central defence and Sean Longstaff playing out on the right-hand side. Swap him and Sancho and it wouldn't be too much of a, of a bad side. But I don't know why Sean Longstaff is playing out on the right Really makes no sense. Um, yeah, you know, Bulgaria not won either of their two games. In fact, haven't picked up a single point. So let's not let them get one here against us. Or worse, three. And as the Bulgaria starting 11 goes through, you can see any of their players. If you know of any of them, I'm not too sure myself. So, uh, yeah, I don't know who to like look out for or anything as their best players. But we'll get the game underway and I'm sure over time we will see. Bulgaria press very high up the pitch here. If we can win it and get on the counter, this might be the opening chance of the game, which we've yet to really see. Sancho finds our feet. We've got Chilwell joining the attack. Ben Chilwell now sliding it back into our path, looking for the finish. And there it is. England take the lead. First shot, first goal. It's been a disappointing start, it's safe to say, as we see the celebration come through from the lads. But... Yeah, England really struggled to get going in this match and it's taken a counter-attack to find it. Chilwell just a slide pass into us. Then the touch does take us a little bit wide. But um, the finish into the far corner is good enough to beat the goalkeeper and find the side netting. Couple of changes for England. I've come off. Rashford is on. Foden as well is on as Deli Ali makes way. And that's with one mind on the first knockout round, you know, because it looks like we're there. I believe the USA and Egypt are currently playing out a 1-1 draw. As that's a great move from England. And now Sancho can drive forward. Goes back to Longstaff. Who I said was Sean Longstaff. It's actually Matty Longstaff, his brother. So I apologise for that. As Maguire. Now Chilwell. Sancho. Good England play this. Look at that for football. Can Kane find the finish though? He looks for the ball through. Rashford might just get there. It's fallen for Foden. England have their second. And there was a slight bit of fortune in there. But they'll take it. And that, my friends, is our spot now booked. And there is full time then. England to Bulgaria nil. Job done. Into the knockout rounds we go. This is how the table finished then in Group F with the United States joining us in the knockout round. Round of 16 and our draw has been made. So let's take a look at who we're facing. As we skip through, you can see we have Cameroon. Germany-Belgium is a right game as well to keep your eyes on. Argentina-Italy, Brazil-Northern Ireland. Spain and Romania already played. Spain winning that one. Uruguay through as well against Denmark. 
Netherlands will take on the United States with France facing Switzerland. And um, if you're not sure how it works, usually you play one, then you have to miss one. So I have every feeling that I won't be playing this Cameroon match here. So we'll see. We'll see if we're in the team. And then, obviously, we need to worry about trying to get through the game itself. Um, hopefully we're playing, because the last thing I want to have happen is us sim the game and get knocked out from that. And we are not actually selected. So there's the team that need to do the job against Cameroon. Nine times out of ten, you'd expect England to win this. There is a little part of me that's not too sure as we sim through. And it is an England victory. 2-1. Cameroon with the first goal of the game. Oh, sorry. Kane actually scored first before they equalised. And then in the 85th minute, Phil Foden put England through to the quarterfinals of the World Cup. It's annoying that we don't get to play every knockout round game. But that's the way it happens um, whenever you play in the World Cup. Now, oh my. I was just about to say, let's see who we're facing next. Brazil. So Brazil absolutely thrashed Northern Ireland by five goals to nil. There's the other ties. What? United States got through against the Netherlands, beating them 2-1. Yo, there's a real chance that United States might be in the semi-finals, you know. We'll take on Brazil, Belgium, Italy, and Spain, Uruguay. I believe we'll be back in the side for this Brazil match then. And I'll see you in game when we're looking at the both lineups, hopefully. Two matches stand in the way of us and a place in the World Cup final for England then as we go through the starting 11. You can see the strength on the bench that we do in fact have Sancho, Ali and Rice, the midfield three with myself, Harry Kane, and Phil Foden looking to put the ball in the back of the net. And Brazil match it with a 4-3-3 of their own. Alisson in goal. The back four, Lodi, Marquinhos, Militao, and Emerson. And you'll see in a moment, as we go into the midfield three, Artur in the centre of that midfield three has been given a role to kind of act as a roaming playmaker, if you will. So uh, I don't imagine we'll see him do much defensive work. I somewhat think it'll be... Kind of like a Brazil front four, if you will. And the rest of the players being given the responsibility to do the defensive work on the bench as well. I don't know if you saw Richarlison, Gabriel Jesus. But it's England who get this show on the road. And as I say, two matches between us and a World Cup final. Delhi for England. Out to this right-hand side. Foden looking for the first-time ball, which, I'll be honest, I did not expect. And that's poor from Emerson as he gives it away. England with a real chance now as Kane gets the first shot away. And Alisson is equal to it. Very, very quick there. The Brazilian goalkeeper to read what Harry Kane was going to do. First time shot from the England skipper. Nearly catching the goalkeeper out. But he has it covered. You can always tell when it's knockout football. of Anilson. Oh my, what a stop. Dean Henderson. I mean, that's an incredible save. Evanilson probably thinks, how on earth have I not scored? There's so much power on that header. That is tremendous goalkeeping from Dean Henderson. Yeah, you can always tell when it's knockout football because both teams usually play so kind of reserved, so tense, so nervy. Neither side willing to make too many risks to go forward. Speaking of which, this is a chance of a breakaway for England. We've definitely got the pace here to go around Bruno, but we need somebody in the box. He slides in, doesn't get any of the ball. There's Foden, back. Oh, what a chance. And Emerson deals with it. Foden with the knowledge to pull it back, looking for Harry Kane. But unfortunately, it just doesn't quite fall England's way. Half-time whistle here. It's nil-nil between England and Brazil. Brazil with the best chance of the first half to take the lead. But it's such a tense game here, as expected. Into the last 15 minutes we go. And England seem quite content, just sat behind the ball, allowing Brazil to have possession and then looking to counter-attack. Richarlison on the turn. Looking to maybe get a pass or a shooting opportunity. Rice is there to win it, though. And you can see that there's a lot of bodies back for England. Here is Vendel now into the middle. We've made the interception and we can play our way out. Maguire out to Alexander-Arnold. And are we in for one opportunity to try and win this match as Rice plays it? Chilwell can send that down the line and we're looking towards the middle. Where's the runners from England? Well, there's a couple in there. Alisson spills it. Now Foden. Is this the chance we were waiting for? Mount, though, can't quite get the ball through. Still, it's with Harry Kane. And Marquinhos defends it. It's felt like it's been like that for us. It's just been nearly, nearly, but not enough. 
Two minutes added on and we are into the last of the two then. Seconds left as Richarlison carries forward. Referee, please end the match. Don't give them an opportunity. Vinicius Jr. over on the left. Brazil, it would have to be in the last seconds. We're over the time, ref. Blow the whistle. And there it is then. So, my friends, we go to extra time to try and decide who gets the spot in the semi-finals. I'm pretty certain that England have switched their formation here at the start of this extra time as we've gone to a three at the back. And this now is the moment where heroes are made. Can any player out there step up and win the game for their country? Well, that ball forward to Richarlison. England with defending to do. He goes over the top for Everton. And this is where England switch in tactics. Might come back to cost as Bruno's shot ricochets off Chilwell. Off of him again for an England goal kick. I was nervous that was going in. With every moment that passes, it's a real opportunity. They might go to penalties here. Chance for England. Allison stands firm as it was the best opportunity I'm going to find all game. Alexander Arnold with a brilliant ball through. And then as soon as that happens, the angle is quite tight. But we've got to try and send it in the back of the net as we look for the run of Rice here. But unable to find him. Allison clears away and all of a sudden it's momentum England oh how has he broke the challenge there Vendel that's absolutely ridiculous no way is that the way that Brazil have done it oh not now 112 minutes I mean, it's class. It really is class from Vendel as he finds the ball over the top to Richarlison who has one opportunity to finish this past Dean Henderson. But how has he broke the challenge there? There should be no way that he breaks the challenge like that. Absolutely none. And England have six minutes left to try and salvage the World Cup. Our lass as a player, we're running out of time and it just feels... I mean, we haven't been good here, let's just say that. Brazil have been the better side, but it doesn't hurt, make it hurt any less, you know. So here we go then. Rice to Mount. It's going to be one chance saloon, it feels like, for England. As Mason Mount now then trying to squeeze that through. Edo Militao able to defend. And now the breakaway on for Brazil. We need to get this ball back. Everton wins it against Sancho. No, somebody put the pressure on. Why is no one going to the ball? What's happening? How have we just let it happen again? Richarlison sinks England with a minute and a half to play because nobody pressed the ball. I don't know what to say. I mean, I get, I get completely. We've got minutes left. Everybody's trying to go forward and... There isn't much, you know, thought in going defending, but that doesn't explain why Brazil have so much time to pick their passes and a Richarlison double seems to have sunk England. Advantage played by the referee. We've got Abraham in front of us, gives us it back now as well. We skip round the challenge of Emerson and you can see there's 15 seconds left anyway. It doesn't even matter if we pull a goal back now because there's not enough time and we still have the ball. Now Abraham flicks it on. Alisson will catch it. It finishes Brazil 2, England 0. Our World Cup journey ends in 2026 in the quarterfinals to Brazil. Oh, man. I'm sorry I couldn't do better. Sorry I couldn't win it. And that's how it finished then for the match facts. Brazil slightly more in control of the game. And as you see... 60% of possession, more shots, more on target, probably deserved winners, but it doesn't make it hurt any less. We can advance through, see who goes on to win the World Cup before we go today. And yeah, I'm just sorry that I couldn't, couldn't win it in the end, but that's football, I guess. Where do we go from here now, though, as the US are knocked out by Switzerland, Uruguay knocking out Spain, Italy beating Belgium, so it'll be Brazil versus Italy and Uruguay versus Switzerland in the other semi-final. It's been a strange World Cup, to be honest. You know, when you think about the fact that Switzerland and Uruguay have made a semi-final of the World Cup in 2026. Great achievement from both of those guys. Um, but as you see, as we skip through, we will get to see who has won the World Cup. And it won't be England, unfortunately. 
And it will be Italy who are champions. 3-0 victory over Switzerland in the final. Means that uh, the World Cup of 2026 is in the hands of the Italians. Third place went to Brazil. And you just look at that. We took them all the way to extra time. We were seven minutes away from penalties, which I'm not sure would have won anyway. But yeah, well... Well done to Italy, and they are champions of the World Cup. For us, it's back to Chelsea, and it's Champions League football. It's, I guess, trying to defend the Premier League again. I do want to become a manager as well at some stage, so there is that, and see what we can do in the world of management. There is one new signing to tell you about, which is this man, Libar Liberato Cacarace, um, who is an 84-rated left-back. So, welcome to Chelsea, him. And uh, as you see, there's Donnarumma sat with the World Cup. You know, the thing is, I just didn't quite... Oh, I hadn't quite been able to put England on my shoulders and carry them there. So, yeah, sad to see. But thank you for watching. If you did enjoy today, a like would be greatly appreciated. As always, a huge thank you for all of your support on the channel. Until next time, have a great day, have a great evening, and I will catch you all again with the next episode very, very soon. Until then, take care, everyone. Much love. Adios.